Hi, I'm Jim Matthew Sadler. And I'm WIM Natasha Regan, recording on my birthday. Yay! Happy birthday! Uh, welcome to this video, which is uh, from TSEC18, the uh, DivP, and we're looking at a game Leela against Fire. Leela's going to be white, and it's a Sicilian Skaveningen, and Leela plays the Keras attack as specified by TSEC. Uh, after the end of the TSEC book, Leela plays quite an unusual move, uh, 9f4. Um, and then it's move 10, taking on c6 is very unusual and hasn't really been considered to be all that good for white because it gives black a very solid center, black captures back towards the center with b takes c6 and black gets an half open b file. What we find in this game is that Leela actually manages to use this to create a very powerful kingside attack and black center doesn't actually turn out to be as mobile as it looks like it, it would be. Uh, so white's actually quite solid on the queen side and then manages to get a good king side attack going. Exactly. So let's have a look at this birthday game. So uh, um, Leela started with uh, e4, c5, knight f3, d6, d4 takes and e6 the Skaveningen and uh, g4 the Keres attack named after a, a very strong player of the uh, well he was strong from about the 1930s to the uh, to the 1970s actually but um, um, so this is and this is still the main line for white g4 very aggressive move um, h6 that's the best move um, I think in the super final uh, we saw uh, some games between um, the previous super final uh, between uh, Stockfish and Leela. We saw some games with a6, I think, and uh, Black got horribly crushed after g5 in both games. Uh, Leela and uh, Stockfish were both won very convincingly with white. But um, h6 is the best. Um, h3, uh, sort of a modern move, I think. Uh, sort of a modern move, I think, uh, protecting the pawn on g4. Um, Bishop e3, a6. And now uh, here, really, the main move is, uh, is bishop g2. Um, but this was the, uh, the first move out of the TSEC book. And uh, Leela played the, uh, the slightly more unusual uh, f4. Um, and after queen c7, which is uh, also the, um, uh, the main move for, uh, for black, a very unusual idea, as Natasha said, knight takes c6. Yeah, I always like these games where uh, things that I've learnt as a child and uh, somehow that they've just stayed in my head uh, when they get challenged. And this is definitely one of them. Um, I was always uh, taught as a child that uh, this sort of move, knight takes c6, uh, allowing b takes c6, was um, was you know, really a, um, a somewhat poor move. Um, black gets an extra pawn towards the centre, which helps him play d5 and free his pieces. Also gets... Uh, uh, a half open file for the for the rook, so casting queen side is a bit more risky because b two will be sensitive um yeah, I mean it's just supposed to be um uh, something that you know that the white should really uh, should really avoid um I suppose white has managed to exchange off quite an active piece, so black's knight on c six was quite active, although white's knight on d four was active too um and black's bishop on c eight. It, it never really gets fully into the game yeah, in this game. Obviously. Yeah, yeah, it's quite tough. It, it, it's um, yeah, I mean, there, there's um, there's uh, there's various things about it. Yeah, this bishop on c8 uh, actually finds it a bit tough to get into the game. Of course, Black did have a half open c file, um, so now he's no longer got that. I mean, you know, basically he's, he's, you swap to the b file. Um, but I think the most important thing that that White has already are these mobile pawns on the king side, and uh, well, they're coming very very quickly, and. Uh, yeah, Black's, Black doesn't have all the time in the world to get things, uh, to, get, to get his attack going. But it is quite, um, yeah, I, I was quite surprised at how convincing the, the white attack looked. You know, it was really, uh, um, it really looked like this looked like just a very good idea. So d5, striking the center, castles. No messing around for Leela, just uh, straight in with the queenside castles. Um, and fire here played um, bishop b7. Um, and bishop g2. Uh, again, slightly, yeah, slightly surprising 
move in a way. Mostly if you're going to attack on the king side, you'll put the bishop on, on d3, you know, but uh, and uh, and then the bishop will be pointing towards the king side. But here White's sort of uh, playing for a sort of a central strategy with the, uh, you know, the uh, all the pieces converging around uh, d5. Um, and here, yeah, um, yeah, I spent quite a lot of time looking at this position. I mean, well, the move that I wanted to play in this position was, um, well, it's, I suppose it's an attempt to um, uh, to get everything that black wants, really, and to play this move c5, which looks like it just, well, it's uh, very, very risky you take on there. But then black goes castles, putting an extra, uh, an extra attacker onto d5. And this is not so bad. Um, I played um, a game against... Uh, Komodo with black, just a, a practice game, and we got this position. Um, yeah, um, now there's been various things. I had some some engine games where white, some engine games where white went. I think was it C three? I think white went, and black just played um, a, um, a plan like rook e eight, king b eight. You know, this is. Um, it, it feels it's, it feels a little bit loose for black, you know, these pawns on c5 and d5, but black does have plenty of activity. Um, for me against Komodo, it went actually quite horribly wrong. Uh, king b1, bishop e7, bishop f2, rook d7, which I thought was a, a reasonable plan here. You know, I was quite, uh, I thought I'd done reasonably well with black. Um, but somehow um, I just ended up getting pincered by all the bishops. So f5 uh, came in. Um, I went d4 in this position, so I just thought, well, if I exchange off the uh, the light squared bishops, I should be doing pretty okay. But Komodo played this great move, bishop f1, um, attacking a6, uh, c4, queen a4. It's a little bit awkward. These uh, these pawns are very weak. And um, um, when I went queen b6, white went bishop c4, bishop h4, Again, and then rook d3 coming around to b3. And this was actually very powerful for uh, for white. So, yeah, I mean, it's um, uh, it might be possible to do it, but you've got to be very, very accurate because uh, certainly in, 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 uh, in my practice game, I, um, I ended up with some, some problems there. Obviously... White could be attacking on the king side or the queen side. Uh, exactly, exactly, that's right. I mean, castling queen side is, is not the ideal for black, really, because... Uh, um, I mean, really, the, the open files, that's, they're, they're all on the queen side. So you re really have the king there and then get, bring the rooks into there. Fire played... Who kind of encourages black to castle king side. Exactly, exactly. So, so fire played bishop b4. Um, yeah, these sort of moves made me a little bit nervous because, um, well, I, to be honest, I just felt nervous about castling king side. I mean, that really... Uh, that did make me uh, very worried. Interesting here that um, uh, black isn't worried about bishop takes f6. Because that gives up the um, the dark squares for white, and um, the king is weakened, but um, um, but not so easy to um, uh, to exploit that quickly. Although you know, I mean, uh, moves like h4 still look uh, vaguely terrifying. Um, what um, uh, Leela preferred was just to keep this um, this bishop on um, on e5. Uh, and queen e7, and uh, I mean, you'll notice how strong this bishop is, and I think this is part of the um, of the attraction of uh, of taking on c6 like that. Um, this bishop on um, on this diagonal, it um, it covers b2. It looks towards the king side, um, so uh, um, you know, combining with g4 to g5 against the, the king side dark squares, and of course, in this position specifically, it um, stops the uh, the rook from coming to b8. So it's actually, you know, it's a very powerful bishop. And I think this is one of the, uh, of the probably the, you know, the, the things that, uh, that Leela sort of takes into consideration when, uh, when playing this move, knight c6. And um, the other one is uh, simply that, um, um, yeah, this black center, now that black, uh, you know, didn't take the chance to play uh, c6 to c5, it's not really that mobile, you know, very hard to get, um, uh, to get moving. So, um, um, and yeah, I mean, that, that just means that, um, that white isn't in immediate danger and that the, the kingside attack can sort of take place. So a3, bishop a5. Um, I vaguely looked at, uh, at bishop takes a3 here, takes, takes, king b1, but white's going to play knight a2 next move. And, uh, well, uh, it's all safe. This bishop on e5 is covering the b2 square, so there's never any problem of mate there. Exactly, that's right. So bishop a5, and, uh, and now Leela played, yeah, Leela played some measured moves, I suppose you'd say, in the coming, uh, 
in the coming middle game, and um, you might have uh, tried to do stuff a little bit quicker. Um, Lila played queen g3 here. Um, I was looking at taking uh, taking and going h4, which was also played in some engine games, um, um, and look quite uh, you know look look very very dangerous indeed. Um, I mean, this queen you know might come to g3 later, but uh, on f3 here, it's stopping black from playing h6, h5. So you know, I mean, there's the there's quite a lot of danger there. I quite uh, I quite like this for white. Um, Lila played queen g3, which is uh, uh, a, a decent move. Just feels uh, a bit slower. Knight d7 takes on d5. C takes d5 and bishop d4. And this move uh, e takes d5. You know, again, it feels a bit odd. You're opening up the uh, half open c file, but um, on the other hand, you're really fossilizing this black center and um, um, ensuring that the bishop on d4 is, you know, sort of undisputed there. And uh, and now you'll start ready to start teeing up with g5 or f5. And uh, yeah, this this open c file, black just seems to be very slow exploiting it. Rook c8 was played by fire now. I do feel that uh, there's one thing that fire didn't do in this game, and that's really try and challenge this bishop on d4. And I was really I was really keen to go bishop b6 simply. You know, get rid of that bishop on d4, then the the kingside uh, um, attack is, is is less strong for white. You know, and then afterwards you can try and uh, you know slowly get get into the c file. I think that would have been um, definitely at certain stages. This would have been a, a, a very good idea. Um, Rook c8, h4 from Leela. Um, uh, in my engine games, uh, I saw g5 uh, coming in, hg, h4, which I like a lot. Um, obviously, can't take on uh, on h4 because of queen g7 mate. And, uh, well, you're threatening h takes... You can't take on f4 because of queen g7 mate. Indeed, indeed. And, um, well, I mean, you're threatening h takes g5, which is going to be huge. And... Uh, a move like here in g4, I go h5, and I'm threatening h6. Looks very, very dangerous to me. You know, I mean, really, uh, really very, very scary. Um, h4 is a good move as well. But again, you know, just very, very measured. And I keep on thinking, well, you know, couldn't black sort of play bishop b6, you know, at some moment and just, uh, you know, correct that, um, that um, I think, that mistake, you know, from the last move. But um, fire played uh, uh, rook c4. G5 came in, H5, yeah, little drawback to the queen being on uh, on G3. Um, if it was an F3 still, uh, H5 would be hanging. Um, F5. Rook C8. Yeah, um, the engines here were um, uh, were suggesting playing this move, Bishop C3. Uh, the idea is after Bishop C3, uh, Rook C8, if f6 is in the game, then uh, you can play the queen to c5, which a square you didn't have available. And, you know, stuff like d4 is going to be, uh, is, is going to be, you know, dangerous all the time. Obviously, it's quite a little bit dangerous as well on the, uh, on the king side, but, you know, it's a Sicilian. That's what you've got to live with. Um, I think, um, uh, my engines were looking at, was it f takes c6? Um, f takes c6 was one idea. And I think also just, uh, um, rook d4 as well. Um, and these sacrifices, uh, um, in general, my engine seemed to think that, uh, that, you know, white had, uh, was, was just, had a very, very good position here, that this wasn't really too dangerous. I'm sure in a practical game, I'd, I'd be a little bit nervous as black, as white, but, um, um, but this was apparently, uh, uh completely defensible and then you'll just material up. Um, fire went, um, uh, rook c8. And now f6 came in. Obviously, g takes f6, g takes f6. So black's got to find a spot for the queen. And here, maybe again, I think fire, maybe Mister, um, I think, I think fire, a, a trick, maybe uh, this move. Queen e8 is what it's played. Um, I thought queen d8 again. Um, and then uh, if we go fg, then bishop b6. You know, just trying to get rid of that uh, bishop on d4. Um, I really do think that that's a, a very important thing to do. Um, I got, yeah, my, my engines were, were, were looking at, at this line. Rook takes d4, e5, with a nice little uh, pin there. Rook f1, queen e8, defending f7. Knight takes d5, bishop d4. And we've got some crazy lines coming in here. Queen f6. So um, if bishop d5, we've got queen h6, followed by mate, which uh, is quite nice. 
knight f6 indeed is the move um so uh oh knight f6 we go knight f6 check sorry uh king g7 knight e8 check and then we take on b7 after with an extra pawn um and these are quite weak i'm threatening bishop d5 as well that's probably quite a nasty uh a nasty little ending there the main move was uh what was the main move rook takes c2 check that's the one king c2 queen c8 check getting out of the way king b1 knight f6 knight e7 i was just counting the material i was saying what is this but uh, bishop g2 rook f6 e4 and uh, my engines were pretty convinced that this was uh, quite good compensation for uh, for black uh, simply because the uh, the e3 pawn is so strong so um, um if you take on a6 then whoops then e3 slightly nasty i mean you've got um e2 as the threat the rook can't get back to the e file very easily also got bishop b7 as a, as an idea so um um yeah it's a little bit um a little bit weird a little bit weird this but um uh this is what my uh my engine thought was uh was possible i mean in general terms you know that this um uh even if a combination like that isn't possible then challenging that bishop on d4 you know trying to get rid of it um i think was was a really good idea um so if i went to queen e8 and after takes came back to e7 which does really feel quite uh quite slow at this sort of stage and Leela played g6 and queen f3. And um, yeah, this is quite uh, quite annoying. The queen's taking on h5, of course. And uh, um, yeah, there's going to be lots of uh, lots of weaknesses there. Bishop c3 was played. Um, so uh, it's um, uh, well, it's got some alternatives, but uh, played this very sharp move. Queen takes h5. Threatening queen h7 mate, it gives black the opportunity for a desperado. And the uh, the funny thing about this is that um, this pawn on c2 is just hanging, and um, but actually neither engine was uh, was com remotely concerned about uh, ab about uh, taking it. So if, if rook c2, we're playing king b1. Um, obviously uh, we can't go rook c2. We'll go queen h7 check. So black has to play queen g7, which will transpose back into uh, oops transpose back into our game. So queen g7, and Leela just went bishop h3. No worries about protecting that pawn. Um, so attacking the pawn on e6, quite nasty. Um, obviously f5 is impossible because the queen on g7 hangs. Um, black went rook c6, and rook f1. Again, not bothering at all about that pawn on c2. Um, and yeah, I mean, rook c2, king b1, uh, rook c4 was uh, the, the engine main line. We're threatening bishop takes c6 check, so that's actually you've got to think of something to do about it. And uh, it's not easy to defend that pawn. Something like knight f8 will allow uh, bishop h6, bishop f6 rather. So um, the engine was going rook here, and then this move rook f2. Um, and um, you're actually just aiming to go rook b2 and uh, find an alternative way of uh, of annoying the black pieces. And um, yeah, just in um, in my engine games, this worked out incredibly well for white. This missing pawn on c2 just didn't seem to play any sort of role at all. Um, yeah, quite amazing, quite a, quite amazing actually. It's uh, uh, I know that you know as, as a white player, I would have been uh, protecting this pawn on uh, on c2 straight away, but uh, engines just didn't worry about it. And fire didn't uh, didn't take it. Played rook takes d4, rook takes d4 and f5, which is uh, a decent idea. You know, get rid. If we, you know, get rid of that bishop on d4, try and put some sort of pawn barrier against this bishop, and activate the queen. Give this rook to the king. Exactly, exactly. But um, there's a little tactical problem, unfortunately, for uh, for black, and it's this move queen h7 check. So um, <coughs> takes takes. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, and now black can't really take on h7 um, because of this move rook f5. And um, uh, this ending is uh, um, extremely unpleasant for black. My engines were winning it with white uh, um, just all the time. Uh, Still, that bishop on b7 isn't really doing anything. It is horrible. I mean, that's one of the problems. If um, if black moves the rook away, then the the, the bishop can just be attacked and uh, and even won. Um, so uh, and there's a past h pawn. These two pawns are on light squares, easier to attack. And the, the, once the rook moves away, the white king can just come in. It's uh, um yeah it's just it just does seem to be uh you know technically losing uh so black plays king h king h8 but obviously that's well 
I mean, it's restricting the king, you know, that's the, the, the main thing. Um, the, I mean, the h7 pawn will eventually go, but the, the king can't move and, and help. And now white um, uh, just displayed quite good technique, actually, just um, uh, opening up the center and opening up lines for the rooks. And uh, obviously, the, the more lines you, um, you have open for the rooks, the better it's going to be. Rook d6, king e3, king h7, rook b1, using that open file, bishop a8 takes, and bishop g2, and then using the pin. So uh, black just finds it, uh, just cannot get his, uh, his central pawns moving or, or any sort of counterplay. Knight f6, king f4, knight e4, rook d3, then takes, takes, and rook g3. And you notice uh, another little point to it, actually, that the, uh, the black king is cut off on the h file. So uh, there's going to be yeah, all sorts of uh, threats for white, you know, just of, uh, of giving mate on, uh, on the h file. And, um, well, that, that makes, means that, that black's rook can't, uh, can't get particularly active either. Um, so the game um, just proceeded, uh, I suppose, quite normally. Um, uh, just uh, Leela took its time um, finishing the game off. There's some little repetitions there. It always likes uh, repeating. Because they say uh, in the chat that uh, Leela likes playing with her food. So uh, it's... Um, uh, uh, always uh, um, always gets there in the end. Um, the big problem for black is that um, here um, the uh, rook h, bishop h7 has got to meet rook h8, um, but it just gets rather hard to, uh, to defend uh, all of your pawns. The white king can start uh, coming in now and, uh, and attacking the a pawn. Well, fire gave up uh, the a pawn, but after that it was just completely lost. White won a few moves later. So there we are. Um, I mean, I hope you enjoyed that. I, what I particularly liked about uh, the game was uh, this decision uh, to take on c6. Simply, uh, I'm always, you know, I said I always like it when um, uh, when things that I've learned as a child get challenged, you know, by uh, by an engine of all things, you know, and uh, a positional idea that um, uh, that an engine just thinks is, um, you know, is very powerful for uh, for the other side. And um, um, I think, you know, the, the, the key, I think the key things that make it possible are the fact that the bishop, you know, could come to d4 and also the fact that you've got your kingside pawns rolling already, you know, and uh, that really stops black, you know, from ever getting these uh, the central uh, pawn majority moving. And when that can't get moving, somehow the rest of black's pieces find it hard to get active. This bishop on, uh, on c8, as Natasha pointed out, was... Um, was uh, um, was pretty poor, you know, all the game, and um, yeah, despite at some stage also having uh, an open half open C file in addition to the B file, Black really, you know, only just at the end managed to get a bit of counterplay, and even that wasn't particularly dangerous. So um, yeah, well worth um, looking out for this idea. I've just uh, definitely added it to my list of uh, of interesting ideas in these structures. Anyway, that's it. So, um, uh, well, anyway, Natasha, have a very, very happy birthday. Hope you have lots of nice things to do today. Um, and, uh, well, for those watching, uh, you know, if you haven't uh, subscribed to our channel, please subscribe. Make Natasha's birthday happy. And, uh, um, yeah, do take a look at our book, Game yeah, do take a look at our book, Game Changer, as well. And otherwise, keep on looking. We've got lots more games uh, uh, from uh, Division P to do. And of course, we are heading towards the super finals as well. So lots more to come. Thanks very much for watching. Thank you for watching.